Now let us discuss about the neurobiology of sleep. Uh, sleep and consciousness, these are the two entities which always always uh, mesmerize neuroscientists. And even the uh, if you go into old civilization, the literatures of old civilization, uh, they all were wondered uh, about sleep. Some civilization even thought death as an eternal sleep. And they have built pyramids thinking that they will wake up from the sleep. And uh, uh, so what maintains your consciousness? How you are aware? And uh, why, like right now I'm sitting in front of you. There is uh, AC is working here. The skin of my body is touched by the dress I am wearing. The lights are there. Uh, but I am not attending to all this. I am attending to the class. My consciousness is regarding uh, the class I am going to take. So what helps me to uh, remove all those things? Like all those unwanted stimuluses, how I cut it. And how I maintain my consciousness. And uh, what makes me sleep? Like uh, if I am going to my bed and I am going to sleep. And what makes me sleep? And what is the difference between a comatose patient and a sleep patient? And what is the basic neurobiology or neurotransmitters involved in consciousness? These are uh, actually uh, even now the uh, neuroscientists are running behind this. This is one of the hottest topic in neurology, in neuroscience is the consciousness. So we will uh, discuss about a part of that. That means into the sleep, the neurobiology of sleep. So before knowing neurobiology of sleep, you should know a basic idea about the consciousness. So your consciousness, consciousness, your consciousness has two parts. One is a basic aerosol system or the wakefulness. That is you are awake and you are uh, aroused. That is the aerosol system or the wakefulness system. And the second is your content of consciousness. That means what is there in my conscious mind? What is there in my uh, mind? What I am thinking? What I am focusing? That is known as a content of consciousness. So it has two parts. One is aerosol uh, or the wake wakefulness. That is a basic thing you needed. To have a consciousness, you need to have a basic aerosol. Aerosol means your eye is open. I am able to respond to some of the external stimulus. Whenever external stimulus come, I, can, I am able to respond. But whether that response is meaningful or not, that is divided and decided by the uh, content also. Uh, so that is the aerosol system and content. So the aerosol system is maintained base, basically by two structures. One is ascending reticular reactivating system and thalamus. And this is content is more or less maintained by the cortex and thalamus. The cortex and circuit with thalamus. The thalamus projects to the cortex also. So this is the basic system which is concerned with aerosol and content of consciousness. This the content of consciousness and details about the content of consciousness beyond the approach to the approach topic. As well as uh, these are actually not at well known. What makes you free will, having a free will to do things. What happens to the brain, what is mind, all those things are always mysteries to humans. So, uh, so this is a basic uh, aerosol and content of the uh, consciousness. So next thing is the aerosol response is a primitive response. Like that is a response which is needed for your survival. So any responses for your survival, the evolutionary survival, that survival usually comes from the brainstem and uh, subcortical structures like thalamus or basal ganglia and all. That means that your uh, uh, drive, basic drives originate from the hypothalamus. Like, uh, um, I mean, uh, sexual, then uh, uh, feeding, uh, all those things come from the hypothalamus. And your autonomic aerosols for flight and free response is regulated by the hypothalamic limbic system, but it originates from the uh, your autonomic, uh, autonomic nucleus in the brainstem. So that means your basic responses, which is required for survival, that are the primitive things, that is present in the animals, that is present in humans, that is present in all other uh, creatures in the animal kingdom. So that is the aerosol response. So aerosol response is a primitive response and this aerosol response actually, you think of a newborn baby. That newborn baby is born to the world. Uh, he has aerosol. He can respond to the external stimuli. So how much content or how much conscious content he has, that is less. That will happen once we mature. 
your consciousness of the cortex matures you will have more con content of the consciousness before that you have just arousal so basically i want to tell you arousal is a uh, basic system and the, all the basic survival mechanisms are from the brain stem so that is why brain stem and subcortical that is why ascending reticular uh, reticular system activation system and thalamus is involved in it so coming to ascending reticular system so ascending reticular activation system so there is something known as reticular activating system these are actually reticular activating system are actually a large number of nucleuses which locates in the brain stem predominantly in the pons reticular activation system the reticular activating system which has sent uh, connection to the upwards the brain that is known as brain and subcortical circuit that is known as ascending reticular activating system the same time it sends inputs down that the downward inputs downward inputs goes to the spinal cord motor neurons the downward inputs goes either from the medullary or from the pondate or from the pondate medullary or from the pondate medullary is lateral and it is more or less inhibitory pontine is medial it is stimulatory so that is a medullary reticular formation and pontine reticular formation that goes to a spinal cord while ascending reticular formation goes upwards in the brain stem upwards to the uh, structures in the brain as well as subcortical circuit that is the known as ascending reticular activating system so now you know what is the basics of consciousness it has arousal and content content is disturbed by the cortex and the corticothalamic pathway while the arousal is from the air as ascending reticular activating system uh, uh, which projects on the thalamus and thalamus projects on the cortex that is thalamo cortical flow that is thalamo cortical flow and cortico thalamic flow that forms a basic arousal response so thalamus is actually uh, the gateway to the brain so that was about the air as and arousal system now coming to the thalamus role of thalamus the thalamus is basically the gateway to the brain whatever inputs coming from the peripheral system it travel through the thalamus and there are multiple nucleus like anterior nucleus dorsal medial nucleus ventrolateral nucleus and different nucleus are there and different inputs comes through the different nucleuses and that will project from the thalamus to cortex that is a normal function of thalamus is receives inputs and projects from the thalamus to cortex and this is known as thalamo cortical pathway this is always activating pathway and thalamus among the nucleus of thalamus there is one nucleus known as nucleus reticularis thalamus or reticular nucleus of thalamus this reticular nucleus of thalamus is very much specific and this, they have certain role when compared to other nucleuses this is the only nucleus in thalamus only nucleus which is inhibitory and this is the only nucleus which does in projects to the cortex only nucleus which does not project to the cortex so uh, you have a ARS which is that is ascending reticular activating system in the brain, uh, medulla or the pons uh, they projects upwards to the thalamus the thalamus projects to the cortex that is thalamic activation system that is thalamo cortical flow this is the thalamo cortical flow which maintains the consciousness the basic consciousness and but there is one nucleus in thalamus that is known as nuclear reticular nucleus reticularis thalamus or the reticular nucleus that is only nucleus which is inhibitory second point that is only nucleus which does not project to the cortex so where does this nucleus projects to this projects to other thalamic nucleus so this projects to other thalamic nucleus so nucleus reticularis thalamus this thing projects to the brain it is only inhibitory and it projects to other thalamic nucleus so basically this inhibit all the thalamic nucleus so what does nrt do nrt will inhibit thalamus nucleus reticular thalamus is a nucleus inside the thalamus this is the only nucleus which does in goes to cortex and this is the only nucleus which is inhibitory and this nucleus will inhibit thalamus so what happens the thalamo cortical activation fails this fails because thalamus is inhibited so thalamo cortical activation is not happening so what happens this will produce sleep or 
this will produce two response in the eeg it produce synchronization so what is synchronization i will tell synchronization of eeg as well as this will produces sleep or decrease in arousal because thalamocortical response is the one thing which have helps in the arousal so synchronization of eeg means when uh, synchronization means you you take eeg from anterior part uh, posterior leads are there temporal leads are there parietal leads are there central leads are there multiple leads are there your aim is to take maximum area of the brain uh, electrical activity has to be recorded so usually if there is a uh, electrical activity in the anterior is predominantly beta posterior is predominantly alpha so there is a change in frequency it doesn't look similar there is change in frequency change in morphology is there because anterior is beta posterior is alpha and when you are thinking uh, with eyes closed uh, uh, eyes closed and you are just uh, not not in any activity just relax and eyes closed anterior also become alpha prominent so that is known as desynchronous that means there are different areas are not having similar morphology and similar frequency different types of waves are coming understood that means different area of the brain are not falling similarly they have different types of waves they have different types of frequency that is known as desynchronization so whenever you are awake you have desynchronization but when you go to sleep when you go to suppose you are going to n3 sleep which is a slow wave sleep you have entire cortical circuits will be slowing large amplitude delta slowing will come so that is known as synchronous because anterior posterior everything have similar waves it is delta that is known as synchronization so n that desynchronization is a function of thalamus so nrt what does it do it will block the thalamus and thalamocortical flow is cut off and when the thalamocortical flow is cut off uh, you have a synchronization eeg and decrease in the arousal so that is a major function of nrt so what does your ARAS do ARAS does ARAS will inhibit nrt and ARAS also has an extra thalamic pathway, extra thalamic pathway. So, uh, ARAS basically inhibit nucleus reticularis thalamus. The function of nucleus reticularis thalamus was to inhibit thalamus. So, now the ARAS will inhibit the NRT. So, NRT cannot inhibit thalamus. So, thalamus will activate cortex. So again, you are awake. So when uh, ARAS is activated, that is ascending reticular formation is activated. Whenever you are walking, talking, you are active in something, your ARAS will be activated. So that active ARAS, what does it do? It will activate, it will inhibit nucleus reticularis thalamus. So nucleus reticularis thalamus cannot inhibit thalamus. Other thalamic nucleus cannot be inhibited. So thalamus will give positive input or stimulation to the cortex. So cortex is activated. So you become awake. And you will have desynchronized EEG. So desynchronized means anteriorly you have beta, posteriorly you have alpha, not a similar waves, different morphology, different frequency, different types of waves. Different areas are not going in similar pattern. They have different pattern. That means each area process different inputs. So naturally the frequency process processing should be different. That is why you have different electrical output from different areas. That is known as desynchronized EEG and awake. So that is a function of ARAS. So the second function is the extra thalamic pathway. So what does extra thalamic pathway does? Extra thalamic pathway which protects the brachial forebrain and it also protects to hypothalamus. So ARAS has two pathway. One is thalamic pathway. The thalamic pathway protects to the nucleus reticularis thalamus and it will inhibit nucleus reticularis thalamus. So, nucleus reticularis thalamus itself is an inhibitory nucleus and it does not project to the cortex but nucleus reticular thalamus projects to the other nearby thalamic nucleuses. So, now the NRT or nucleus reticularis thalamus is totally inhibited. So, it cannot inhibit the thalamus. So, thalamic thalamocortical flow will activate and that will activate the cortex and cortex will become, you will become awake. And because the thalamocortical flow is there, you have a desynchronous CEG that is classical for a awake patient. Okay, now the extra thalamic pathway, it goes to basal forebrain and hypothalamus. So what is this basal forebrain? You see, this is your brain. And uh, I am drawing the medial area. This is a corpus callosum. 
this you have the mammillary nucleus and hypothalamus and this is a ventricle all those things will come here so this is a frontal area and just in the basal area near the anterior perforating substance basal area near the anterior perforating substance there are certain nucleus and nucleus are there what does nucleus means nucleus is nothing but gray matter you have normally in the brain you have a gray matter outside and white matter inside there are certain white matter gray matter which lie inside this uh, white matter they are known as nucleuses so gray matter is cell body so nucleus means it is a collection of cell bodies so, because cell body can only produce a neurotransmitter and it goes to the white matter that is the axons so white matter means axons gray matter means i mean uh, nucleuses means gray matter gray matter and nucleus which is cell body which contain basically cell bodies so this is known as a basal forebrain so this basal forebrain is a collection of different types of uh, nucleuses it contains like something known as nucleus ambi uh, nucleus accumbens then it has uh, nucleus of myrnet nucleus basalis of myrnet and uh, uh, diagonal brand of broca all these together all there is multiple nucleus septal nucleus nucleus ambiguous uh, nucleus of basalis of myrnet and uh, uh, and uh, 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 then the diagonal band of broca diagonal band of broca all these nucleus are actually cholinergic so basically basal forebrain there are multiple nucleuses they are either there are only three neurotransmitters in basal forebrain cholinergic as uh, that is acetylcholine then adenosine is also produced in basal forebrain which we will tell later and third one is it can have some gaba or glutamate also so basically the most important one is cholinergic so basal forebrain this eras will activate this cholinergic neurons so what does this cholinergic neurons do cholinergic neurons will activate the cortex so basal forebrain is activated by eras eras will activate i mean basal forebrain will activate the cortex just like basal forebrain inhibit the nrt or thalamus and the nucleus reticular thalamus is inhibited so th other thalamic neurons project to the cortex that way from the subcortical activation happens same way uh, goes to the basal uh, forebrain from the basal forebrain the cholinergic nucleons are activated and this will activate cortex so again cortex is stimulated so this cholinergic neurons of the basal forebrain is important in case of alzheimer's disease and dementia where you have a damage to this basal forebrain cholinergic neurons so the, when the basal forebrain cholinergic neurons are uh, less the cortical activation is decreased so you have you may have decreased cortical function which is seen as cognitive impairment or memory impairment or dementia that is why you use drugs which increase the cholinergics that is like uh, uh, your donapacil memantin all those things are increase the cholinergic it increases the cholinergic activity so that is out of the topic so coming back to our sleep so basal forebrain is activated nrt is inhibited then hypothalamus will secrete a hormone known as orexin this orexin hypocretin system is the major the master role in the wakefulness and alertness the orexin will activate the wake promoting regions located in the eras wake promoting eras will be uh, regions of the eras will be activated same time it will inhibit rem sleep onset area that is rem on areas uh, rem off is activated so uh, basically there are certain areas which stimulate the rem sleep there are known as rem on there are certain areas which inhibit the rem sleep that is known as rem off so orexin is basically a wake promoting neurotransmitter uh, hormone uh, secreted by hypothalamus and this orexin uh, will stimulate the wake promoting areas and stimulate the rem off so basically ultimately this also gives wake response make the patient awake so cortex again will produce awakeness so this is the basic system of arousal so i will conclude so thalamus has nucleus reticularis thalamus that will inhibit thalamus other nucleuses of thalamus other thalamic nucleuses will activate cortex okay first point is nucleus reticularis thalamus will activate inhibit thalamus while the other thalamic nucleus and the major function is to activate cortex the cortex has in turn has modulation of the thalamic nucleons nucleus also that is corticothalamic that does in involved in the sleep pathway it has more importance in the consciousness pathways and attention third thing is as nrt is whenever nrt nrt is activated that will inhibit thalamus so air as ascending reticular activating system 
will inhibit nucleus reticularis thalamus and ARAS will activate basal forebrain. ARAS will activate uh, hypothalamus. Basically, lateral hypothalamus is activated. Hypothalamus will produce orexin, which will produce, which is a weak associated neurons. This basal forebrain will activate cortex. So, these are the basic aerosol response which is happening in the brain. So, the first is a nucleus reticularis thalamus. This is a nucleus in the thalamus which is inhibitory and doesn't have any connection to the cortex. It inhibits the thalamic neurons. So, thalamus cannot produce thalamocortical outflow which is activating. So, what happens? This will produce synchronized EEG. Synchronized EEG. And sleep. Sleep and synchronized EEG produced by the NRT activation. So, thalamic nucleuses usually activate cortex and cortex has modulation downward also. And the uh, air as a reticular activation system will inhibit NRT. So, NRT cannot inhibit thalamus. So, cortex is activated. Second mechanism by which air as activates is it activates basal forebrain. Basal forebrain has a lot of cholinergic neurons. These cholinergic neurons will stimulate the cortex and it will activate the cortex. And uh, the, it also activates hypothalamus. And hypothalamus will produce a hormone known as orexin. It also produces another hormone known as histamine. Histamine is produced by the tuberomammillary. That is also helps in wakefulness. So basically, this is how the basic wakefulness or arousal response is maintained. NRT, RAS and other thalamic nucleus. So, this is your brainstem which contains ARAS. This is your thalamus. And this is your nucleus reticularis thalamus which also part of thalamus only. Thalamus, what does thalamus do? Thalamus will activate your cortex. And there is a basal forebrain nucleus. This basal forebrain also will activate uh, cortex. This is activate, activate. This NRT will inhibit. So what does A, A, R, A, R, S do? A, R, S inhibit here. A, R, S activate here. And hypothalamus also is activated. This hypothalamus. So this is the basic aerosol system, how it will work. ARAS will inhibit NRT, ARAS will activate hypothalamus, ARAS will activate basal forebrain. NRT usually inhibit thalamus, so thalamocortical flow is not happening. Okay, this is how the normal aerosol mechanism happens. There is, the, for attention and the consciousness, you have two mechanisms. One is below up, that is coming from the ARAS and thalamus upward to the cortex. That is what is maintained aerosol. Then there is another system which comes above below from the cortex downwards it will modulate the thalamus that means suppose i am going to take a class or a, a seminar i am going to take in a seminar hall i am doing my pg suppose i am doing my pg i am going to take a seminar class and my staff is sitting in front of me i am taking the class and somebody has kept some snacks nearby me also so this is i am hungry so i want to eat this snack but i know that for me important is taking the class right now Otherwise, my HOD will get angry at me. So, what I will do? I will not focus attention on the snack for the time being. Even though my mind inside, I want food. I will focus on the seminar. Why? Because this is more important. So, that which is to which uh, area you have to give attention. That is decided by the cortex. So, cortex will decide. Cortex and limbic system will decide that where you want to focus. And that will... That inputs will come from the cortex down and modulate the thalamic neurons. Which part of the thalamus or the gate should be closed, which part of the gate should be open. Only to the open gate inputs will come. Closed gate inputs won't come. This is the basic mechanism of attention and uh, attention and awareness. But I will take a detail about the attention and the systems in the cognition. That means in dementia, I will be uh, discussing about that. Let us now concentrate on the aerosol system. So this is uh, this system is not much important at the time being. Time being more important is this is the basic aerosol system. So aerosol system, the thalam era supplies thalamic and extra thalamic. Extra thalamic activate basal forebrain and posterior hypothalamus. Thalamic will inhibit nucleus reticularis thalamus. Okay, nucleus reticularis thalamus normal function was to nucleus reticularis thalamus normally will inhibit thalamus. So this will produces. This basically produces sleep. Okay. This is a basic aerosol system. Now, uh, we have finished about the basic aerosol system. The posterior hypothalamus will produce orexin, which is also a weight promoting hormone, uh, immunotransmitter. Then it produces 
histamine. Histamine also is a weight promoting things. So we have finished the aerosol system. Uh, aerosol system contains, uh, remember, NRT, thalamus. NRT is actually a part of thalamus only. Then ARAS and the modulation by cortex. This will maintain your aerosol. This is what about aerosol system. Now we will go to uh, the wake promoting systems. We will discuss certain areas which is wake promoting, certain areas which are sleep promoting. We will discuss about that now. So the wake promoting areas, there are, as I told, air as ascending reticular activating system has a lot of uh, neurotransmitters coming through different pathway. These, many, most of the neurotransmitters coming from the ascending reticular activating system are basically wake promoting. So wake promoting uh, neurotransmitter networks includes Weak promoting system. Weak promoting system includes one is noradrenergic. Noradrenergic. Then you have a serotonergic. Serotonergic. Then you have dopaminergic. Dopaminergic. Then you have glutamate, glutamatergic. Glutamate. Ergic. Then you have cholinergic. So these are monominergic systems that is serotonergic, noradrenergic, dopaminergic and glutaminergic. Along with that cholinergic system also. The, these All these systems originating from the brainstem or the from the ARAS only. So these are the ARAS related uh, uh, wakefulness promoting circuits. So noradrenergic originate from Locus cerulus. Locus cerulus is from where noradrenergic system originates from locus cerulus. Then serotonergic from raphe magnus. Raphe magnus nucleus will supply the serotonergic. Dopaminergic comes from the ventrolateral periaqueductal gray and ventral tegmental area. So this dopaminergic system which originates from the ventrolateral periaqueductal gray and ventral tegmental area. And uh, this ventral tegmental area, that is the uh, tegmental area of the uh, brain stem, that is a uh, mammin brain. That area from there, the neurons will ascend up to the cortex that forms the mesolimbic and mesocortical pathway. This is formed by dopamine, mesolimbic and mesocortical pathway. The mesocortical goes from the tegmentum to the cortex, activate the cortex. The mesolimbic will goes to the limbic areas. That means behavioral response, so cortical activation, behavioral response. So this is more involved in the part of dementia. Ventrotegmental pathway is affected in the case of dementia and other psychiatric disorders also. This mesocortical and mesolimbic system is involved uh, in the, basically mesolimbic system is involved in the reward pathway that we will discuss in the cognitive system. Right now we will concentrate on the uh, sleep, attention, arousal. So noradrenergic, serotonergic, dopaminergic. Remember the nucleus, noradrenergic is locus cerulus. And uh, 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 serotonergic is raphe magnus. Dopaminergic is ventrolateral periaqueductal gray or ventral tegmental. Then glutaminergic is parabrachial nucleus. Parabrachial nucleus. Then cholinergic is lateral dorsal tegmentum and pedangulopondine nucleus. Pedangulopondine nucleus and lateral tegmental nucleus are the cholinergic brainstem nucleus. Basal forebrain, we discussed that also has large amount of cholinergic neurons. Another focus of cholinergic neurons lies in the uh, brainstem is the lateral, do lateral dorsal tegmentum and uh, 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 pedangulopondine nucleus. Your pedangulopondine nucleus is involved in the gait also. Among this, ventral tegmental area gives a mesolimbic mesocortical involved in other pathways. Even the cholinergic system has involvement in uh, in the uh, pedangulopondine pathways involvement in the gait system. So these are the these five forms the wake promoting brainstem. Then you have two more. One is orexinergic, which we have already discussed. Orexinergic is orexin hypocretin system. It is also known as hypocretin. The other name of orexin is hypocretin. This is secreted from lateral hypothalamus. Actually, that is a, this orexin is the major uh, neurotransmitter, major chemical which is involved in your wakefulness. Orexin production is stimulated by air as only. Ascending reticular activating system will stimulate whenever you are walking, whenever you are active, your ascending reticular formation will be activated. From the peripheral inputs also can activate ascending reticular formation. That ascending reticular formation when activated, that will, uh, one, we told it is inhibit NRT, that we told. Second is extrathalamic pathway. In the extrathalamic pathway, one is to basal forebrain. That will produce cholinergic, leave it. Now, the remaining extrathalamic pathway from the ascending reticular formation will go to hypothalamus and produce orexin. 
so that orexin is a one of the major hormone in wakefulness that we will discuss then second the last one is histaminergic histaminergic the histaminergic neurons or neurons located in the tubero mammillary nucleus of the hypothalamus tubero mammillary nucleus that also is a part of hypothalamus so remember this seven neurons and the nucleus which produces because this is a very potential question and it has been asked previously also which among the following is neuroadrenergic which among the following is dopaminergic so remember this uh, dopamine uh, we will discuss in basal ganglia about other dopaminergic uh, systems but this is the one dopaminergic system involved in the wakefulness so noradrenergic serotonergic dopaminergic and glutaminergic and cholinergic this forms a monoaminergic system which originate from the monoaminergic system which originate from the brain stem then the orexinergic and histaminergic which originate from the hypothalamus these seven things will maintain wakefulness there is one more center is there rem on and rem off that i am not telling here i will tell in later sleep promoting system sleep promoting system has only two things mainly major part of sleep sleep promoting is two things one is ventrolateral preoptic nucleus of hypothalamus so hypothalamus is involved in sleep as well as arousal arousal by orexin and histaminergic uh, sleep by ventrolateral preoptic then you have a parabrachial uh, pa parafascicular parafacial parafacial nucleus located in the uh, brain stem so we have discussed the weak promoting system now coming to the sleep promoting and we will pre uh, sleep promoting is only two two things are there majorly one is ventrolateral preoptic area and second is a para facial zone para facial zone this ventrolateral preoptic nucleus is a part of hypothalamus so, so, so this hypothalamus has role both in wakefulness and sleep sleep by ventrolateral preoptic area and arousal by orexinergic system which originates from the lateral hypothalamus plus the tubero mammillary body of the hypothalamus secrete uh, histamine that also is arousal uh, regulating uh, neurotransmitters so ventrolateral preoptic nucleus which secretes gaba and another neurotransmitter galanin so galanin and galanin and uh, uh, gaba both are inhibitory which is secreted by ventrolateral preoptic nucleus this parafacial zone secrete gaba so this is inhibitory right? so these are the uh, these are the sleep promoting areas vlpo and para facial zone you have another area known as rem on and rem off that and uh, uh, circadian maintenance system that we will tell later so this is a uh, this is a wake promoting noradrenergic serotonergic dopaminergic glutaminergic and cholinergic originating from the brain stem these originate from the brain stem but this comes from the hypothalamus okay that much is clear then the uh, next thing is VLPO which are in hypothalamus only this is a nucleus of hypothalamus only and this originate from the brain stem so this is a sleep promoting and wake promoting areas so there is a interlink between them there is a sleep promoting area and wake promoting so this has up and down connections it will the sleep promoting area will inhibit the wake promoting areas wake promoting area will inhibit the sleep promoting areas so how will you sleep how will you get awake that is the next thing we are going to discuss so you have certain areas which is involved the aerosol eras thalamus nucleus reticularis thalamus and cortex then you have certain areas which is involved in the wakefulness that is the five uh, areas that is locus cerulus gives noradrenergic uh, then glutaminergic from the para brachial area then dopaminergic from the ventrolateral periaqueductal gray and ventral tegmental then cholinergic from the uh, lateral dorsal tegmental or lateral pontine tegmental and pedangulopontine nucleus so these things along with orexin and uh, histamine will cause us a wake promoting so remaining is a sleep promoting though so these two interact each other this uh, wake will promote sl uh, inhibit sleep promoting sleep promoting area will inhibit wake promoting so certain inputs which like uh, your circadian rhythm, your biological clock or uh, your uh, tiredness, your physical activity, all these activities will modulate these two. Wake promoting are modulated that is either inhibited or stimulated by these activities. So these external factors, other factors which more act on these. So suppose 
uh, I have not slept for two days. So my uh, I my body is tired. I have a sleep debt is there. So that sleep debt will go and stimulating the sleep promoting area. So slowly it is a progressive stimulation. That means suppose in the morning hours I am more awake, I am more active. By the evening my sleep debit is increasing. When the sleep debit is increasing that means I have large time of wakefulness. My uh, sleep promoting area is getting slowly the stimulation is accumulating and increasing stepwise manner. It is not a sudden activation. It is like stepwise. Every hour it is getting activation is getting strong, strong, strong. And at a point it will go say breakthrough where the sleep promoting area will have more activation than a wake promoting area. So sleep promoting will switch off the wake promoting area. Okay. Same thing goes in the wake promoting. Uh, so when you slept for a long time, slowly your uh, wake promoting area is getting activated, activated as time progress activation of the wake promoting area is aggravating. Aggregate, aggregate, aggregate. At a point, the, it will begin more active than sleep promoting. So it will inhibit sleep promoting. This is known as sleep wake switch. So this is the switch. Uh, it is not a simple thing as you uh, as you think that switch, putting on the switch will uh, on it, putting off it will off. That it just doesn't work like that. This is a complicated mechanism. The easiest way to understand it is there is two things. One is wake and this is sleep. So as the activation slowly increases, this is sleep and this is awake. As the activation on my sleep activation is slowly increasing, increasing, increasing. At a point, this sleep promoting area is more active. So it will inhibit the wake promoting. So it will come down. So now. After some time again the wake promoting area is increasing, increasing and sleep promoting areas stimulation is decreasing, decreasing and at a point this is more active. So it will inhibit this. So this is like a seesaw. You have a sleep promoting, you have a wake promoting. So this balance between the stimulation, there are certain, you suppose certain weights are laying, uh, adding on the sleep area and wake area. Which area is more weight, that area will become more active. So like that is a sleep wake switch. So uh, we have discussed about the arousal system which includes ascending reticular activation system, thalamus, NRT and cortical modulation. Here as remember it is a thalamic and extra thalamic pathway. Extra thalamic and thalamic pathway are there. The extra thalamic pathway go to basal forebrain as well as hypothalamus. Basal forebrain cholinergic activation of the cortex. Uh, hypothalamus orexin with a predominantly orexin secretion then we discussed about wake promoting system which has uh, five neurotransmitters originating from different nucleases from the brain stem and two from the hypothalamus that is orexin and uh, histaminergic nucleus then sleep promoting area basically ventrolateral preoptic and parafacial zone I'll, parafacial is around the uh, facial zone that is known as PZ, parafacial zone, parafacial zone that is PZ. VLPO will secrete GABA plus glanin. This will secrete only GABA. Wake promoting are noradrenergic, cholinergic, uh, dopaminergic, serotonergic, 5-HT or serotonergic, uh, then glutaminergic. These are the five, this one. Hypothalamus are orexin and histaminergic. So this much we have covered. Now we will go and see what happens in the circadian rhythm and homeostatic process. Now we will discuss about the uh, circadian rhythm and homeostatic process. How it act on this wake promoting, sleep promoting, aerosol systems and how it modulate it. So we, this is a wake promoting area, locus cerulus and serotonergic has a raphe magnus. Just one more point, this raphe magnus nuclei has two things, this dorsal raphe and ventral raphe or caudal raphe or caudal raphe, dorsal raphe or caudal raphe. This dorsal raphe will go to the brain and upward circuit and activation. The caudal raphe descend downwards and uh, goes to spinal cord. What does this do is? This will produce some motor activity, motor activity concerned with aerosol. That means when you have a need some motor activity for aerosol, motor and automatic activities required for the aerosol, walking, talking, all those things are regulated by this caudal raphe also. That is the role of uh, raphe magnus nucleus. Then 
you have dopaminergic ventral periaqueductal gray and ventral tegmentum. Ventral tegmentum forms mesolimbic and mesocortical pathway. Mesocortical helps in the cortical activation. Mesolimbic helps in the behavior. And this is involved in the reward pathway addiction and all. Addiction, your euphoria comes from the euphoria. That is addiction is and the euphoria. All those things are led to mesolimbic activation coming from the ventral tegmental. So the neurotransmitter involved in the reward pathway and addiction is basically dopamine. Then the histaminergic nucleus is a tubular mammillary nucleus. That is only histaminergic nucleus located in the brain. Remaining everywhere other neurotransmitters are there. The glutamatergic is parabrachial nucleus that is will activate. Then even the basal forebrain has some of the glutaminergic centers. Now the orexinergic we discuss lateral hypothalamus. This is the other areas which we will later later. REM of area and uh, uh, the circadian rhythm maintenance area. Suprachiasmatic nucleus. So these that is SCN is suprachiasmatic nucleus. Suprachiasmatic nucleus again a nucleus located in the hypothalamus only. So basically the wake promotion, slope, uh, sleep promotion, uh, sleep promoting, wake promoting as well as circadian rhythm everything is under the control of hypothalamus. That means I told initially these are basic survival response. For any organism for survival you need a basic sleep, basic uh, uh, basic sexual drive, uh, basic uh, habit of uh, I mean uh, your hunger uh, and uh, agitation everything should be there. It's a basic response which helps you to survive, flight and flee response everything. That is basically from the basal areas that is in the subcortical and brainstem. Why it is like that? Because evolutionary when the humans evolved evolutionary initial organisms initially formed old organisms has only the basic structures slowly slowly the neocortex has built up when it reaches the humans the neocortex is huge neocortex means your uh, cortical areas which is involved in uh, certain fine uh, fine and coordinated things like uh, modulating multiple uh, thing and assimilating the ideas all those things are formulated in the neocortex example is a prefrontal cortex so that areas uh, uh, is developed in humans. So in uh, young, lower animals also, lower strata animals also, uh, the basal, basic areas of aerosol, basic area of hypothalamus, all those wiring is almost similar. Humans difference, have the evolutionary difference in the human brain happened basically in the neocortical areas. So uh, uh, then coming to the orexinergic uh, suprachiasmatic nucleus. Then cholinergic, I have put separately because cholinergic, even though it is a wakeful associated, it activates REM sleep also. Among the five neurotransmitters I told, everything activate wake and everything will inhibit REM. Cholinergic is the only uh, monoaminergic neurotransmitter among the, those five systems which has activation of REM sleep. At the same time, it has some role in, it has role in the wakefulness. So it is something which is both action, both in the sleep as well as this one. Sleep basically only in the REM sleep. Now uh, the ventrolateral, the sleep promoting areas. The sleep promoting areas includes the ventrolateral preoptic area which is also hypothalamic nucleus and it contains GABA and glanin. We have discussed. The paraficial nucleus is basically GABA. These two will cause inhibition and produce sleep. And remember there are two more structures. One is REM on and melatonin secreted by the pineal gland. This also will promote sleep, which we will discuss later. So major sleep promoting centers is VLPO. That is a major center. So just remember, you have a sleep promoting and you have wake promoting areas. This is like a seesaw. In which area the stimulation is more, slowly, 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 that area will get an upper hand. And so the, uh, uh, the other area, suppose by the evening, the sleep area, the activation of sleep area is so high, so that wake is having less activation and it becomes overcome the wake area so you will have sleep the, the, the vice versa thing will have go on happening it's like a seesaw that means i want to tell is it is not like uh, like other neurophysiology when you're talking you will tell that this will like thalamus will stimulate cortex thalamus is stimulating cortex all on a sudden but this is not like that this is like an aggregative like each second the stimulation is slowly increasing 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 otherwise you will not get a switch that is how you that like uh, you have a 8 hours of activity or 12 hours of activity then you will have a sleep or uh, you sleep for 8 hours then you will have a wake because by 8 hours the sleep depth has decreased and the wake load has increased so wake will slowly get prom prominent than sleep system this is how it will act the sleep system and wake system so there are some factors which regulate the sleep and wakefulness those are circadian and homeostatic factors and then we will discuss about the REM on 
and REM of systems and how NREM sleep and REM sleep are produced. This will come in the next thing, next part. So, this is the uh, wake promoting area. The wake promoting area, this is a locus cellulis, that is locus cellulis is nor adrenergic. So, okay, then these two are cholinergic nucleus. That is lateral uh, lateral dorsal tegmentum and pedunculopontine and lateral dorsal tegmentum. These two are cholinergic nucleus. Then you see parabrachial nucleus. This is glutaminergic. Locus cellulis. You have locus cellulis, cholinergic, glutaminergic. Then this is a raphe magnus which is serotonergic. And uh, you have this is the Tuberomammillary, this is a tuberomammillary nucleus which is histaminergic. And uh, you have the ventral tegmental and ventral pontine area which are, which are the dopaminergic, which are dopaminergic. This is dopaminergic. So serotonergic, cholinergic, norinergic, dopaminergic. Uh, this is a mammillary body where you have the tuberomammillary nucleus is histaminergic. And uh, uh, you see this is again hypothalamic area which secrete orexin. Orexin. It also, you know, that uh, that uh, orexin is a uh, stimulating area. Then you have the basal forebrain, which is basically cholinergic, which will activation of the cortex. So these are the weak promoting areas in the brainstem. You have locus cellulis, uh, parabrachial nucleus, lateral dorsal tegmental, and pedunculopontine. PPT is pedunculopontine, lateral dorsal tegmental is LDT. Then raphe magnus, which is a uh, which is serotonergic. This is raphe magnus. This ventral preacutal gray, which is a uh, ventral tegmental area is dopaminergic. This is orexinergic hypothalamic, histaminergic hypothalamic. So, this much area forms the brainstem activity, brainstem, and this area forms the hypothalamic area which are involved in the uh, awake response, and this is the basal forebrain. So, these are the three structures basal forebrain, brainstem, hypothalamic area, and basal forebrain. This will regulate the wakefulness. Now, coming to the sleep. Sleep, the major center is VLPO. This is the major center that is VLPO, ventrolateral periaqueductal gray, ventrolateral uh, preoptic nucleus. Ventrolateral preoptic nucleus, it will produce GABA and glanin, and this will inhibit other nucleus. You see, all these, all these weak promoting areas is inhibited by, is inhibited by your uh, sleep promoting VLPO will inhibit all these wake promoting areas all these wake promoting areas inhibited by vlpo same time you have another nucleus which is sitting here that is a parabrachial nucleus that is a para parafacial zone that is gabanergic that is also involved in the sleep promoting so sleep promoting vlpo and para uh, facial nucleus so uh, now we will come to rem on and rem off neurons how the regulation of rem sleep is happening we will discuss so there are certain areas known as REM on, which will switch on the REM sleep. That includes sublocal cellulose. Sublocal cellulose. That is, remember, local cellulose is a norinergic wake center. Near to the local cellulose, you have a sublocal cellulose. Below that is a sublocal cellulose. That area is a REM on area. And this will produce REM sleep. This will produce REM sleep. The next thing is an REM off area. REM O for REM switch off area. This REM off area is uh, it will inhibit this REM off area will inhibit the REM on area. So the REM off area is there, REM on area is there. REM off area will inhibit the REM on area. So uh, what is the role of wake areas? The orexin, orexin, what does it do? It will activate all other wake promoting areas. Wake promoting areas are activated by orexin. From where the orexin comes? By the stimulation of ascending reticular activating system on the hypothalamus will also produce eras. This wake promoting is actually part of eras only. So it will ultimately activating eras only. And second thing is orexin will activate the REM of neurons. So the orexin is there. Whenever you are walking, talking, your eras is activated. So then that time, orexin is there. So orexin will inhibit REM by inactivating REM of neurons. That is why while walking and talking, you are not getting sleep. If you get sleep while you are walking, suddenly you will fall down. That is what is happening in cataplexy. So cataplexy where there is orexin is less. 
you will get a sleep or you will get an atonia of the REM while you are walking. That is the function of orexin. So orexin is a master switch or master regulator here. So REM on neurons and REM off neurons. So this is what happens in wakefulness. So what happens in the sleep or the VLPO, whenever VLPO is activated, ventrolateral preoptic pre nucleus, which is sleep promoting areas are activated, this will inhibit wake promoting areas. And that will also wake promoting areas inhibited, including that that means air is inhibited. So orexin secretion also comes down. So decrease in orexin. And so what happens? The uh, indirectly as well as directly, they will also inhibit REM of neurons. REM of neurons is inhibited because when the wake promoting areas is decreasing, orexin is decreasing. Uh, the uh, 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 this stimulation of the REM of is gone. So once again, this is very much confusing thing. So once again, you have an REM on and you have an REM off. The REM on is inhibited by REM of neurons. REM on neurons is inhibited by REM off neurons. First thing, fine. When the REM off is activated always by the orexin and wake promoting system will activate REM off. So you won't get an REM sleep when you are awake. When you are walking, you won't get. So whenever VLPO is activated, VLPO will inhibit wake promoting area and decrease in orexin. So uh, you will get a sleep. So when the VLPO is activated, initial sleep you will get is an NREM sleep. You will get an NREM sleep. So initial sleep will be an NREM sleep. As the sleep progress, the orexin is far, orexin and wake promoting system is further getting decremental activation. That is just decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. And the REM of neurons, again the inhibitory response in the ventrolateral preoptic area to the REM of is not a all or none phenomenon. It is like, uh, it, it will be like uh, slowly, slowly, slowly the inhibition is increasing. At a point comes where the REM of is totally inhibited. That is why after some time of NREM sleep only you will get an REM sleep. Okay, this is how REM sleep is maintained. So, uh, once again you have an REM on area and which is inhibited by REM off areas. Okay, this much is clear. REM on area which is inhibited by REM off areas. The REM off is activated by orexin. The orexin also activated ascending reticular activating system. This ascending reticular activating system actually stimulates the or as orexin to secrete. So this is like a circle. So orexin ultimately switch on the uh, REM off. So REM is not getting, you are not getting REM sleep. Now your ventrolateral preoptic nucleus, whenever ventrolateral preoptic nucleus, that is a, your CSO of sleep and wake or switch of the sleep and sleep has switch on the sleep. That means sleep dip does increase or so some factors is that that will promote the sleep. So at that time, VLPO will come into action. Till that VLPO is not acting because the ARAS is inhibiting VLPO also. So now the ARAS VLPO is activated and this ventrolateral preoptic area will inhibit REM off. And this also will inhibit ARAS. So what happens? This inhibition is not in a single manner. As the time progress, inhibition slowly, slowly increasing. And so initially you will get an NREM sleep because the activation of the VLPO. So VLPO initially produce NREM sleep only. Slowly, slowly the REM of neurons are inhibited, inhibited, inhibited. After some time, after certain hours of sleep, uh, certain, uh, end the, towards the end of the cycle, you will has total inhibition of REM of. At that time, your REM on switch is on. So you will get convert to REM sleep. So basically in the sleep, you have two mechanisms. One is sleep wake switch. That is a one switch you have. The second switch you have is a NREM REM switch. So there are two switches, not single switch. The first switch switch will start your sleep, that is NREM. The second sleep is switch is again because of the CSO. You have the REM off and REM on. This is locating again in the CSO. So whenever your uh, switch is more towards REM on after after some type of an REM sleep this uh, inhibition of REM off is increasing increasing and at a point you will get REM on will get activated and you will get REM sleep this is how your sleep wake system REM and REM sleep will work okay 
So this is the REM generator. Uh, so REM generator, the REM on neurons is the sublococerulus is the REM on. Sublococerulus is the REM on, which is known as sublococerulus. This is just near to the locus cerulus. Locus cerulus is neuroenergic wake promoting system. You have an REM off that is ventrolateral, uh, uh, ventrolateral periaqueductal gray and lateral dorsal tegmentum, which is cholinergic. And that is the forms the REM off neurons. So REM off, REM on switch is there. And REM on is activated, you will get REM sleep. One more thing, when you get an REM sleep, when the REM on center is activated, two things happen. One is the REM on will send an input upward to the basal forebrain. Again, the cholinergic neurons of the basal forebrain is activated. Second is the REM on will send a stimulus to the spinal cord motor neurons, either direct or through indirect. That inhibition to the spinal cord will produce REM A toni. Well, the basal forebrain, when the cortex is activated by the cholinergic system, but your other areas, most of the areas of the cortex is already in the sleep. So you will get uh, basal forebrain activation that will give you hallucination. That hallucination is otherwise a dream. So that will produce the dream of an REM plus hallucination, the hypnagogic, hypnopombic hallucination, hallucination. So, this is the function of the REM on neurons. This REM on neurons is inhibited by REM off. Okay, this is under the control of REM off indirectly under control of VLPO as well as orexin system. So, this is how your uh, REM and REM sleep will work. When the REM on is activated, you have a circuit going upwards the basal forebrain. That will activate your dream and hallucination. Downwards will inhibit the spinal cord motor neurons and you will have atony. So, suppose you are not having atony. Your atony is absent. What will happen? Atony is absent during REM sleep. What will happen? You will start enacting your dreams. You are getting the basal upward track, that is where the basal forebrain is normal. But down towards the spinal cord is not acting. So you will enact the dreams because during the dreams your uh, muscle is not getting paralysis. That is known as REM, Sleep Behavior Disorder or RBD. So that is one pathology. Second pathology, if there is a uh, damage to the orexin, because orexin will activate REM off. So whenever you are walking, talking, your orexin is under uh, is increasing stimulation by ARAS. So whenever you are walking, talking, your ARAS will produce large amount of uh, stimulate the hypothalamus to produce orexin. And orexin will inhibit REM off. So when you are walking, you won't get an REM. So when you have a decrease in orexin, as decrease in orexin, what will happen? First thing happen will be sudden sleep. You have a decreased sleep latency, decreased sleep latency. You go to bed, you suddenly you will sleep. Second is a decrease REM latency. Usually, uh, the REM will happen after some time of NREM sleep when the switch of the NREM, REM turns towards REM. I told previously, that is whenever the switch of REM, NREM turns towards REM, then only you will sleep. So, orexin, decrease sleep latency, decrease REM latency. And third thing is, while you are walking or while sitting, suddenly you will get a sleep. That is known as sleep attack or narcolepsy and also you will suddenly while you are walking or talking you may suddenly get this lower pathway or the atonic pathway is getting activated REM atonic is happening that is known as cataplexy we will discuss this again in the uh, second part about disorders of the uh, sleep so basically you have an REM on so you have an REM on and REM off REM off. The REM off is activated by orexin, inhibited by ventrolateral preoptic area. The REM on upwards activate basal forebrain, you will get dream or hallucination. Downward will produce atony. You remember you can have cataplexy because of over activation or because of the atony happening suddenly will produce the downward pathway towards spinal cord of the REM on is hyper that produce cataplexy. Then you have narcolepsy that is sleep attacks if the orexin is less when the orex this both happens and orexin is less 
undue or unnecessary activation of REM area that produce sleep attacks or narcolepsy. Third is REM behavioral disorder when REM sleep is associated without atony, without atony. So this much is clear. So we have discussed about the aerosol system, wake promoting areas, sleep promoting areas. So now the this has completed the first session. The next session we will discuss about circadian rhythm, homeostatic process, role of melatonin and supracasmate nucleus, then NREM sleep and REM off and on, how it works and how the sleep-wake cycle is maintained. All those things we will discuss in the next presentation. <music>